I'm Brian, and welcome to City Study. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use your meter. Okay, so getting into this real quick. Um, we've had a lot of questions by a lot of people about hydrometers, refractometers, how to use a meter, this kind of thing. And there's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people don't seem to understand why you want to, how to do it, and what what's it for? Okay, well, first, the reason you use any kind of a meter is to measure the either potential alcohol that's going to be in your brew, right? Or the if it the point that it's at for fermentation, like, is it done? <laughs> and I see a lot of people saying, hey, my fermentation stopped doing things after two weeks. What do I do? Well, did you take a reading? No. Then I can't really help you. It is either stalled or done. After two weeks, it's probably done, but without taking that initial reading, you can't tell. So the important things to taking readings are, there's two readings you need to take. You can take a bunch, but the two you need are original gravity, which is when you make a brew, and final gravity when you're done, when you're, when you're ready to bottle or re-rack or whatever you're gonna do, when you're gonna age it, any, any kind of things. So when I first started, I started using a hydrometer. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use a hydrometer real quick. It is essentially just a tube with some weight on the end. And this is a triple scale. It actually shows bricks and it shows some other thing that I don't even use. But it also shows specific gravity. The specific gravity scale starts at 0.990 and goes up to 1.160. Wow, that would be a lot of alcohol. It measures alcohol by testing the density of sugars in your liquid, okay? When you take a an original reading of your wort, an OG, an original gravity, which you should do, when you take that, it tells you how dense the liquid is with sugar. When you ferment that out, at the end, you take another reading, the final gravity reading, and that tells you how much sugar was fermented out. The difference between those can be used to calculate how much alcohol is in your brew. Make sense? Sounds nice and simple, right? So what we're gonna do, without making too much of a mess here, is I have a test liquid that I'm gonna pour into this tube. And what you wanna do is fill it, eh, not all the way full because it'll just spill out. I'm gonna put it about there. Put it to a, a, an area where I know I can probably read this. I'm gonna take my hydrometer, drop it into the liquid, try to break up some of the bubbles. This was a carbonated liquid. You see how it floats? Now this particular liquid is at ah, too many bubbles. Let's try this again. This particular liquid comes out to, oh, looks like 1042 to me. So 1042. That would be our original gravity reading, okay? Right now, all that means is the potential sugars in this can get you to a certain level of alcohol. Now, without knowing where the, the final fermented uh, gravity is, there's no way to really know. We'd only know the maximum alcohol that can come out of that, okay? Makes sense. Um, the next type of reading is a refractometer. Now, refractometers can be used for, in my opinion, original gravity only, okay? There is a lot of controversy about them. I started using a hydrometer and then found a, about refractometers. I went, why does anybody use hydrometers? Refractometers, you just need three drops to put in there and you can measure it and it's really accurate and it's super cool and all that. And then I found out one important thing. These work by bending light. Light does not bend through alcohol the same way it bends through sugar water or water. So they cause very, very, very erroneous readings in your final ward. Usually I was getting readings that were far too high and I just thought, okay, I am doing something seriously wrong. My stuff is all over the place. And I was getting like, you know, it would say 4% alcohol in a 12% alcohol beverage. There are calculators online, okay, that can help with this. However, my 10 minutes of research into trying to figure out how to use them showed me that there's a lot more calculations to be done. Hi, Tigger. <laughs> there's a lot more calculations to be done 
there's an immense amount of things that need to be done and figured out before you can use this. And even then, I don't think it's all that accurate. My personal feeling is just use a hydrometer. They're great for original gravity and for final gravity, and they're accurate all around. In truth, if you want to be completely honest about this, we cannot possibly calculate. Hi, Taylor. This is Daddy's little girl. She uh, likes to be involved in everything, and she's apparently going to be my co-star today. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Essentially, if you want to be completely accurate with a reading for alcohol, you really have to send it to a lab. I mean, we can hope to be within a couple percentage points, but you know, when you say 12.36%, yeah, it could be anywhere from like 11 and a half to 13 and a half. Don't, don't get so caught up in that. But to, to use a refractometer, if you wanna use it for your original gravity, it's perfectly fine. They usually come with an eyedropper, they come in a nice little case, and all you do is you get a few drops of your liquid, you put it on this little screen here, just like that, then you flip the, the thing down, the uh, little lens cover there. I have to take my glasses off to do this. Point it at a bright light, and if you did it right, it comes out, oh, look at that, 1.043. So there's a slight amount of discrepancy there, because our hydrometer said 1.042, but there was a lot of bubbles in the wart too. So I can't really say that that was 100% accurate. And you know this come, sometimes comes out with a slightly fuzzy line, so you're guessing still. But like I said, we're close enough. You're gonna know, did it work, did it not work, essentially, okay? Don't get too caught up in it. That's for original gravity reading. Now, anytime you're doing readings, you're, you want two readings. You want an original gravity and a final gravity. The original is when you're brewing, when you're putting it all together, and the final gravity is when it's done. Now, I'll put these back on. You are just blurry out there. The final gravity determines how much of the sugars were actually burned up. Now, there's a very simple way to figure out how much alcohol was in there. Let's say, just use this as an example, this started at 1.042, right? And it went to say 1.000, which is neutral. It means almost all the sugars were used up. Technically, if all the sugars were used up, it would be below one because the alcohol is lighter than water, but that's a whole other story. Let's not get into that. Essentially, you look at how much sugar was consumed to, to calculate approximately how much alcohol was produced, right? Really simple. So let's say 1.043, oops, 1.043 minus 1.000, don't need a calculator to do this one, it's 0 0.043, right? Some people will say 43 points, but it's actually 43 thousandths specific gravity. Anyway, the next number that's very critical to this, you can use ABV calculators and all that kind of stuff, but it's really, really simple. You can keep this easy for yourself. Multiply that number by 131.25. That's it. 5.64% alcohol. I'd just say 5.6 because that 0.04, you know, how close am I? It doesn't give you 100% accuracy, but only a lab can really, excuse me, only a lab can really do that. What we're looking for is a rough guide. You want to know, is it 5.6? Is it 12? You know, that kind of thing. Um, another method that some people have used is a venometer. Now, these are funky little things. It, it's kind of odd to try to use, and I don't think they're very accurate at all. I've gotten much varying numbers when I use this. Um, but what you do is, again, you get some of your liquid, you put it in, hi Tigger, you put it in the top, and Tigger has decided that now is the time that she wants attention. Put some in the top, and you let it go to the bottom, and you want it to drip out. It's What it is, it's a very, very, very tiny little fissure down the bottom, very small hole, and you want that liquid, they even say to swing it like a centrifuge and things like that. You want it to go all the way down, here it's starting to come up, and it says six drops. So here we are. One. What, what you're doing is letting the liquid go all the way through and trying to have a continuous stream of liquid going through that little tiny fissure. You don't want any air bubbles in there and things like that because they will mess up the reading. Okay, so we're at three, 
just for the sake of time, I'm going to stop at three. I know this is, is fine right now. Then you dump it out and you hold it upside down up to a light source. This is where they get weird because now you're going to see that liquid come back down and I can totally see it. It's hard to do on video. It comes back down and it comes back out and it'll stop at a certain point and where it stops is the level of alcohol. This should be able to measure from zero to 25 percent alcohol. Now my test liquid really didn't have much alcohol in it at all. I'm going to say like maybe one to two percent and wow what do you know it stopped at like 2.75 percent. I'm, I'm guessing based off of the actual thing it might be like 2.8 but that's actually kind of impressive. I, I've not had it work quite that well. Well it's still it's still going. It's at three. It could be 3%. I don't know. What I actually made here is, um, this is kvass. Uh, it's the bread beer kind of thing. Um, somebody told me that I should make it, so I did some research into it, and I made it. Unfortunately, everybody that we gave it to didn't really like it, including me. So we're probably not going to be doing a video on kvass. I mean, obviously, I'm using it as a test liquid. Sorry to all you people that really love the stuff. It just really didn't do it for me. They say it's an acquired taste, and I'd have to agree. It just, it didn't work. There's so many other things that we make that we really, really like that to me, it just didn't make a lot of sense to, to incorporate this. However, someday, I might try it again. And there's still beet kvass. We might actually try that. But that's the general gist of using your meter, okay? I, I can go on and on and on. I, I ramble a lot, and I know. But what we're looking for is, I get a lot of questions of people saying, hey, my brew stopped doing something after a week or after two weeks. What do I do? What's wrong? Well, when I ask, did you use a hydrometer or did you take a reading? No. Okay. Without that reading, I can't really help. We want to help. Okay. But if you had a reading and you said, hey, it was, you know, whatever your reading was, and now it's this, now we know it's doing something. It might be done. It might not be done. Usually after a week or two weeks, the answer is it's probably done but it could be stuck because if the sugar level is still too high, it could be stuck. And then we just need to take some other action, add in some more yeast, whatever, to really get that fermentation going again. So this is why it's so important. It's not just about knowing how much alcohol, it's about knowing how your brew is going, the health of your brew to know, is it working? Is it done? Should I move to the next stage? It's all really important. Something I'd really like to talk about though, that's very, very serious is in range of accuracy, the Vinometer is the least accurate thing I got here. It's just not accurate. I'm going to say within two, three, four percentage points, maybe. So, you know, if you want to know if your brew is 25% or 2%, it might tell you that, but that's about it. Refractometer, great for original gravity, but once alcohol starts getting in there, there's so many calculations to be done, it's easier to just use a hydrometer. You can do it. I mean, a lot of people swear by them and they, they like them. I think it's a neat toy, but um, that's about all I think it's worth for me. Hydrometer. This is my third one. I have broken two of them so far. One just the other day. The uh, tube that it came in just had end caps and I dropped it in and went right through and hit the tile floor and exploded. So this is my newest one. We actually um, have links to these all in the description. This is the Chefast one. It comes with a nice little case and a bag and the tube and the whole thing. I like it. The kit was like 15 bucks or something. It's just, it's great. Um, but the hydrometer to me is still the best, easiest, down and dirty, closest to accurate way you can do it. Some people will say that because the graph is so small that the, the gradients aren't very big that it's an inaccurate way to do it. To those people, I say, yeah, sure, you can get the big fancy ones that are longer and spend a lot more money. And then when you break it, you'll be even more ticked off because you broke a $50 hydrometer versus a $15 hydrometer. But to really be accurate, the only way, send it to a lab. Um, I, I, I've never done it. I would imagine it's probably very expensive. And in all honesty, does it matter if your brew is 11% or 12%? Does that make a difference? I don't think so. We're home brewers. Once you start getting into commercial work, that's different. If you were commercially making this stuff, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. I'm a home brewer. I just make it for me, for friends, just to, you know, and to show you guys how to do stuff. 
if it's 11, 12, okay, close enough. You know what I mean? I want to know, is it 5 or 15 or 25? That's really where I'm at, you know, and I'm just babbling again. In closing, <laughs> get a meter. These things are not expensive. If you're careful with it, it should last you for years. And honestly, my opinion is get a hydrometer. They're the most all around useful. They're gonna get you the most bang for your buck. They're gonna get you the best answers. And honestly, spend the $15. You will save yourself tons of headaches, lots of time trying to figure out what you did wrong, a lot of head scratching. It's all good. Um, anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and uh, happy brewing. Have a great day. Hey everybody, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, don't forget to hit the subscribe icon down below and hit the little bell next to it. That way you get notified of everything we do.